So the Daily Wire uh, has a support. Virginia Republican Governor Glenn Youngkin vetoed two bills on Thursday that were largely backed by Democrats in the state. Youngkin released a statement explaining his decision to veto a bill that would allow the retail sale of cannabis, along with a bill that would gradually raise the state's minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour. The Republican governor cited dangers to uh, Virginians' health and safety, especially for children, as the main reason for vetoing the marijuana bill. The proposed legislation of retail marijuana in the Commonwealth endangers Virginia's health and safety. States following this path have seen adverse effects on children's and adolescents' health and safety, increased gang activity and violent crime, significant deterioration in mental health, decreased road safety, and significant costs associated with retail marijuana that far exceed tax revenue. Uh, that was, according to Youngkin, in a statement. Uh, he spoke with a local news station, further explaining his reasoning, and let's watch a little bit of that. Today, I have uh, vetoed the bill to create a commercial retail market for cannabis. Uh, cannabis is bad for Virginia. And in all the other states uh, that uh, have had an extensive retail market, what you see is, first, it's terrible for children and adolescents' health and safety. Uh, massive increases in child poisonings, massive increases in adolescent usage. Uh, and of course, when you combine that with the fact that the, the, the potency of cannabis today is dangerous, it drives mental health challenges and mental health sickness uh, to the point of psychosis. Uh, there's also been a, a systematic increase in these states in violent crime. Uh, of course, the black market doesn't go away. I mean, in California, the legal retail market only accounts for 10% of the entire cannabis market, and therefore gang activity escalates and violent crime increases. And that's on top of the fact that, that you see traffic accidents and fatal fatalities increase over 70% in marijuana-related accidents. And then finally, you couple this with the reality that the overall costs through the system in order to address the, the, the social requirements of this retail market far outweigh the tax receipts. And in fact, uh, a study in Colorado uh, uh, found So that the governor is exactly correct, even if he is standing in front of a oddly fake-looking green screen. I don't know what the thought process was there. Uh, but he's, he's, he's absolutely right. That about sums it up. Marijuana is bad for Virginia. It's bad for any state. It's bad for every state that's legalized or decriminalized it. And uh, and you know this is the point with marijuana. It's it is harmful. Um, and and the pothead activists who've gone around shouting for years that pot doesn't have any negative health effects were lying. You know they were lying the whole time, or they were or they were just high and they didn't realize that what they were saying wasn't true. Maybe it's some combination of the two. But uh, it's it, it's a lie. It, it, you know of course it, it has negative effects. There's tons of research out there now, and the research about the research in particular uh, about its link with psychosis is especially interesting and especially terrifying. And that's the kind of thing that potheads used to scoff at. I mean, they still do, but it's you know nobody takes it seriously anymore. But you used to be laughed off the stage if you were to uh, say anything about about the link between uh, people smoking marijuana and like actually losing their minds. Um, but now it's just it's it's just a fact. Like the link between weed and schizophrenia is especially well established. Um, so we know about that. We know about the bad health effects. We know about the dangers of people being under the influence. You know. Uh, we know about all those things, but mostly we now know uh, from experience what happens in society, in a community, when weed becomes legal, acceptable, and accessible everywhere. And what happens, first of all, is that a whole lot more people start smoking it, right? So it, it, you know, this, there's always been this claim that, well, even if you make it illegal, everyone who wants to smoke it's going to smoke it anyway. Which, by the way, if that was true, then why do you care so much about making it legal? Like, if the law has no effect on people's behavior, if you cannot stop people at all from smoking weed by making it illegal, then why were you so desperate to make it legal? Apparently, it doesn't matter anyway. Um, but no, it turns out that, of course, of course, when you make something legal and, and uh, therefore, at the same time, more accessible, and you take away the penalties, of course, more people are going to do it. I mean, you're always going to have a certain portion of people who will do something anyway, regardless of the consequences, who are especially motivated to go out and uh, you know, and even if you're, if it's less accessible, they'll find a way to access it. That's always been the case. But the more accessible you make it, the more people do it, and the more, and the, and the, the, you know, the, the, uh, the more you take away legal consequences, the more people do it. Obviously, obviously. 
And so that's what's happened. Um, and, and we know that as people do it more often and they do it more openly, this precipitates a rise in crime rates, a decline in the quality of life for everybody in the community. Uh, and we've all seen this. We don't have to speculate anymore. We don't have to talk about what we think will happen. We've seen it happen. This is why I always go back to the question, has the legalization of weed in any city made that city better? And I know you might ask, well, what do you mean by better? That's, a, that's kind of a subjective. More livable, like a better place to live for anybody. Has it solved any problem? Has it helped anything? Like, give me a thing that has been helped. Give me a, show me a city where they've legalized weed and something about that city, something tangible, improved. Show me that. You can't because it hasn't, it has not made anywhere a better place to live. Um, there's no example of that. And because it always works the other way. It works the opposite way. And, and we all know it. Like, having everybody walk around stoned all the time has made everything worse. It has improved nothing. Absolutely nothing. It has created problems and solved none, so it's bad. It's a bad idea. If you're going to do something that is guaranteed to make nothing better, better while making a lot of things worse, then you shouldn't do it. It's really that simple. What else is there to even say about it? Is the future of America doomed? A majority of Gen Z supports left-wing policies like open borders and socialism. If we don't reach them and change their minds, the country we know and love will be lost forever. PragerU is the leading nonprofit when it comes to influencing young people. Their educational, entertaining, pro-American videos meet young people where they are and open their minds to the truth. But they need our help. Go to PragerU.com, make a tax-deductible donation. Whatever you give right now will be tripled and have three times the impact. Donate $10, it triples to 30. Give, 30, give $100, it triples to $300. PragerU is 100% free to everybody with no fees or subscriptions. They don't rely on ads or clickbait headlines. Contrary to what the left says, PragerU isn't funded by a handful of billionaires. It's funded by people just like you. So to keep making great content, reaching millions, and changing minds, PragerU needs our help. Go to PragerU.com to donate today. And this, by the way, is why I changed my mind on it personally. I was uh, debating this yesterday on Twitter, as, as you know, where all the, uh, all the very fruitful debates happen. And somebody pulled the, you know, one of my favorite moves where they go and they dig through. They say, well, let me see. This is what you're saying on this topic now. But let me see if you've always said this exact thing. And someone went and they uh, scandalously discovered that back in 2018, uh, I sent a tweet out where I was advocating for legalizing marijuana. Um, and the thing is, you didn't have to go search through my tweet. You could just ask me and I'll tell you that, yeah, that used to be my position. I've said that on the show. Uh, I used to be in favor of legalizing marijuana. I did. I was. Uh, I was wrong. So I changed my mind. You're allowed to do that. You don't, just because you don't have to, if you say something now, you don't have to say exactly that same thing forever until you die. You're, if, not only are you allowed to process new information and change your opinion, but you should. You should be open to new information and your opinion should be open to change depending on that new information. And so that's what happened with legalizing marijuana. I was kind of, you know, I was never like militant about it. Um, and it's not something that I personally want to engage in. But I, I, I was generally persuaded by, you know, the arguments people made in favor of it. And what changed my mind? Well, it was really no argument that anybody made on the other side. It's that I saw in practice what happens. So I heard all the arguments from the weed advocates saying, oh, yeah, we can legalize it and here's going to be the result. Foolishly, I believe that argument. And then we did legalize it. And then I look and say, oh, well, none of that happened. In fact, all the... Everything that the that the uh, the prohibitionists said would happen did happen, and none of the positive results that the advocates promised panned out. And so, of course, I changed my position. Anyone, you, everybody should. Like it's just it's not even a valid position anymore to be in favor of weed legalization because we've all seen it in front of our faces. What happens? Um, and. And there's really nothing else to say about it, which is why you'll then get a bunch of cliched slogans shouted at you by the potheads. Um, and just using this as an example, you know, mentioning the debate uh, I was having yesterday. And if someone tweeted this, I mean, this, I'm just using this example because this, this, is, this is like, this is, it's like running down all of the most cliched arguments. Somebody said, bad call. Alcohol and cigarettes are far worse. God created it, being weed. It hasn't killed anybody. Veterans need it for PTSD, et cetera. A Democrat made it illegal decades ago. Joe Biden is against it and thinks it's a gateway drug. Prohibition is unconstitutional. Okay. Now, I'm using this as an example because this is the classic rundown of pro-weed arguments that you hear all the time. 
And it's pretty much always like every tweet that anyone puts out or a post or anything uh, in favor of weed legalization, it's always that. It's like some variation. They might mix it around a little bit, but it's always just that. And what are the problems with these arguments? Well, first of all, there are many substances um, that exist in the natural world that you're not supposed to put in your body, okay? So this God created it stuff, it's the dumbest. Even back when I found the, the pro-weed argument, uh, legalization argument persuasive, I was never persuaded by that because it's so stupid. Like that does what God created it, so therefore it's automatically a good idea to light it on fire and inhale it. There are a whole lot of things God has created that you should not light on fire and inhale. There are a lot of things God has created that you should not consume in any form. Okay, if you're lost in the woods uh, one day and you're starving, okay, it would not be a good idea to just stumble without any prior knowledge to stumble across a, some kind of a, a bush with berries and say, well, God created these berries, so they must be okay. God created it. Um, you know, that's an assumption that if you make that assumption enough times, you will definitely die because God has created a lot of poison berries. He's created a lot of poisonous things in the world that you're not supposed to consume. Um, so the God created line is, it's true. Like God did create, well, I mean, he created the plant, right? That is, that is used to create this drug, but, uh, that doesn't mean that it's okay to consume. Um, as for alcohol and cigarettes, even if alcohol and cigarettes are worse, that still doesn't mean that weed should be legal because all you've done by that logic is add to the problem and saying that it hasn't killed anyone is just false. It ignores, for one thing, the deaths caused by people under the influence. Um, it, it, again, ignores all the volumes of research about all the negative health uh, side effects and everything else. Um, and there's one other point that I want to make that, that came up last night. And, and on this thing about alcohol and tobacco products, again, even if I agree that alcohol and tobacco products are just as bad or worse, that's not an argument for legalizing yet another bad thing. It's sort of like, you know, if I was morbidly obese, but I didn't drink alcohol, and then you said, well, you're already obese. You might as well be a binge drinker too. Well, that logic doesn't make any sense. Except the, it, that only makes sense in a kind of defeatist, suicidal sense. So that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, I mean, quite literally a suicidal argument when you're saying, well, these other bad things are happening, so let's just add another bad thing. Let's give up, basically. Um, that doesn't make sense. But also, alcohol and tobacco are part of American culture. Okay, going back to the beginning of this country, that's one of the reasons why any effort to totally ban them has not been successful. Because it's just it's an ingrained part of American culture. Tobacco in particular has helped to build this country from the very beginning. Uh, it, and so did alcohol. Now, I'm not saying that this is a, a definitive reason to not ban them, but it, but it is a reason to not ban them. And I, it's a pretty good one, actually. Tradition matters. History matters. Those are part of our culture. Uh, marijuana historically is not. Now, somebody brought up that uh, Native Americans, you know, Native Americans smoked, and and um, and so it is part of American heritage. Um, and you know, I think it's true that that Indian tribes had marijuana. Now, as far I could be wrong, I haven't done a lot of research on this because I don't care that much. But I think that it was introduced. I don't think that they had it, uh, you know, prior to. Uh, contact with with the new world as far as i'm aware marijuana was introduced to the native tribes in the 15th or 16th centuries um but even if it wasn't marijuana you know the native tribes they smoked peyote they, they had other kinds of uh, drugs with hallucinogenic properties um the shamans the witch doctors they were always tripping on something right so it is probably true that the even if it wasn't exactly marijuana it, it's probably true that the drug habits of Native American tribes are closer to the drug habits of Americans today. Like, there's, there's a similarity. But, but think about that for a second. Because Native tribes were 5,000 years behind the civilized world. These people were stuck in the Stone Age, literally. Literally in the Stone Age, many of them. Uh, they didn't have the wheel. They didn't have written language. Many of them were nomad, not all of them, but many of them were nomadic tribes, hunter-gatherers. They were extremely primitive, even by 16th century standards. So the fact that they were also high all the time, perhaps should tell us something. You know, I mean, here's the fact. We know, we know that a society where people smoke tobacco constantly and drink whiskey from morning to night can also be a highly functional, highly successful society. 
We know that. And we know that because that was our society. Okay, that was our society in the 20th century when we, when we, when we accomplished all of the things that we accomplished. We were landing on the moon and winning world wars and doing everything else. Um, and going from like horse and buggy to, to, to the moon landing and beyond. Uh, well, not beyond, unfortunately, but at least to the moon landing. Um, so, so we know that. The greatest civilizations on earth, in the, the history of the earth, have at least had booze. And lots of it. Yeah, the greatest civilization in the history of, of, of the world had, had booze and people were drunk constantly. Our own civilization, when it was great, again, had, had tobacco and booze and lots, lots of both. Now, I'm not saying that tobacco and booze made us great exactly. Uh, but it did, it did not prevent our greatness. Like there is no evidence on a societal scale that having easy access to legal tobacco and booze will precipitate a societal collapse. There's no evidence of that because we've seen a society that is that is like drowning in both of those things and also caffeine, like nicotine, caffeine, and booze. That that's America has run on those things even more than it, you know it's run on Dunkins, but also the, the booze and the and the uh, and uh, the the tobacco. So we've seen that, but so we know we, we know that. What about a society full of stoners and druggies? Can that kind of society thrive? There's no evidence of that. There has never been a society of people who are drugged out of their mind, stoned. There's never been a society like that that has thrived. There are plenty of societies that have engaged, uh, you know, uh, in large part in those sorts of activities. And, and they, they live in mud huts, Okay. It's like they struggle to invent, they don't invent the wheel, okay? Like th- that's what that kind of society looks like. And if we want to end up back there, if we want to just decline all the way and, and take this thing full circle, then, then that's what's going to happen. If you'd like to see what else I have to say, you can access my full show by going to dailywire.com or by going to the Matt Wall Show Twitter page. Hope to see you there. Godspeed.